Hello, everyone. My name is Phil Calvert, and a warm welcome to the Financial Advisor Mastermind and Challenge. Throughout this week, advisors, leading experts, and consultants to the financial planning profession are sharing amazing insights into just what makes a world-class financial advice business. Today, I'm delighted to be speaking with someone who quite simply is taking the financial advice industry by the scruff of the neck and transforming it into a profession. Professionalism is her middle name, and I'm delighted to welcome little Miss Wow herself, Michelle Hoskin. How are you, Michelle? I'm fab. I'm fab. It's been a great start to 2019. So far, so good. Excellent. Uh, you, had a, a, you know, I was looking, um, uh, I was just sort of seeing if I'd missed any facts about you, and I discovered you've been doing this standard stuff since 2006, as far as I can make out. Yeah, but it actually goes a bit further than that. So this is my, tw well, this will be my 21st year in financial services so and always as a coach and it was only when I was sort of I was telling a story at um, an open work event it was an all-woman uh, open work event and that's where my little journey started 20 years ago so yeah wow. this is my 21st year and I, I still only feel about 18 <laughs> it's amazing it's extraordinary um, it, it only seems like yesterday I know it's 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 nuts, and I think um, you know I've do I'm just saying obviously to you a minute ago we're doing this induction of this new person, and she's like you know so how did it start? And I was like, oh my god, ages ago, and I'd sort of went through the whole story of you know I started working for advisors in Allied Dunbar, and oh yeah. my god, it's it's twenty years, it's and I'm and I'm still going for it, still trying to kind of crack it, you know. So it's. I, yeah. did say, I did say to her, this, you know, the stuff we're doing with the standards, it will, it'll, it'll happen way past my lifetime. You know, the yeah. changes we're trying to make will really only take hold. It could, be, it could take 50 years. It could take longer. Yeah. We're so going for it. Let's start, start with a bit of background. Tell us about Standards International and uh, what you do. We'll, 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 we'll come on to the specific BS numbers yeah, yeah. Uh, in a minute. So just tell us about Standards International and what you actually do. Okay, so if you think about um, best practice, so everyone talks about what best practice is, the right way of doing stuff, you know, the best way of doing stuff. And fundamentally, nobody really knows. And nobody's, nobody's known for years, but everyone has their own different view on what does awesome look like. So, you know, we've got planners out there running firms that are ultimately trying to reinvent the wheel, and it's been done a million times before. So what standards are? Standards are the framework of ultimate best practice. So what does an ultimate amazing financial planner look like? What does an ultimate amazing firm look like? What does an ultimate amazing power planner look like? So standards are printed documents, right? Mm. So what Standards International is, is a standard setter. So fundamentally, you know, the standard that we introduced into the market ourselves is the power planner standard. We designed it by collaboration with a committee and we are a training body, um, a standard setting body and then an assessment body. So okay. striving for ultimate best practice by not just just sort of going in there with the clipboard and ticking the boxes, but actually establishing and setting what these standards of professional and operational excellence are and everything else that falls within that, to be honest. Okay. So as I understand it, there are standards for individual advisors mm -hmm. and there's also standards for the professional firms. Just talk us through, through what they are. Yeah, so the, the, the standards, in the, so all these standards that exist in financial services are what we call sector specific. So they've been designed fundamentally for financial services globally. So they're not for estate agents or accountants. They are specifically for our sector, our magical business, as I often refer to it. So you've got two sides. You've got business standards. So for, you've got a standard called BS 8577 which is a standard for a financial planning business. Okay. The brief was very simple. It was, Michelle, if you were going to set up the best financial services firm in the world, what would it do? How would it operate? And what would it look like? Yeah. And that's where we started. You've then got a standard um, for compliance, which is awarded to the firm again, which is BS 8453. And that was designed because we recognized, the sector recognized that most compliance consultants, if not all compliance consultants that advise firms, are themselves unregulated. Right. There are no, you know, you've got all these amazing, amazing consultancy firms who are providing compliance support, but based on what framework? basically their own and the one of the regulator. So BS8453 was, is for compliance, how a firm runs compliance. Over the other side, what you've got is you've got ISO 2, which is a international quality standard for financial planners, not advisors, planners. Mm 
Yeah. And then more recently, you've got the Power Planner Standard, which again, sector specific. Uh, the only difference is, is that the Power Planner Standard is a standards international standard. The others are published and owned by BSI. But oh, we are, we're the only body globally that, that has anything to do with them and that assesses the sector against them. Okay, so let's just play devil's advocate for a moment. Some might say uh, there's just another badge to pin on the wall or something like that. Um, presumably, ultimately, we're looking for um, protecting consumers, clients, uh, through having those high standards as well. But how much more than just a, a badge that someone can put on their website is it? Oh my God. I mean, flipping neck. I, th I, th I think fundamentally, if you imagine, if you, let's, let's do it, let's do this visually. So if you imagine the regulator and their standards are here, so they're, lots say that they are regulating the lowest common denominator, right? So let's say the standards are here. Um, best practice and kind of just doing a bit more, being a bit better, running a good business is here. Yeah. What the standards are doing is way more than that. You know, they're, they're pushing the boundaries to here. You know, everything that a firm does, an individual does, it wants you to rethink it, do it better, do it the best of your ability to reach your ultimate potential. So it's this tiered sort of stagger of, well, let's just flip and go for it. And you know what? The person that ever questions it's just another badge, they're not right for them. The standards are not their thing. You know, they need to go and sit another exam and pass that. This is not, this is not about the badge. No one ever says to me, oh my God, I loved getting my certificate. Nobody, ever. You know, they love the journey. They love the experience of just going, oh my God, we've made that process 10 times better and 10 times more effective. That, they're the people that these standards just, they just fit. It's just like a, almost a match made in heaven it sounds like an obvious one so presumably these firms that have achieved these standards they will then as a result of that at some point start seeing a noticeable a positive improvement in their bottom line it's, it's immediate almost i mean okay the, the biggest thing so for example i did a training day on friday and that training day was i was educating a firm which is you know, they're, M they're MDRT, top of the table, they've done strategic coach, they've, you know, they're top of their game. First class is their wow word, right? Mm. And honestly, I could see the magic happening in the training room. People were going, well, I'll do that. Let, let me help with that. Oh, yeah, maybe I could do that. Why don't we think about doing this different? So the, the impact is immediate. It's immediate. It's not right. about the certificate. It's about the collaboration, the rethink, the redesign. The, the money comes when what, what's happening is because, you know, a rising tide rises all ships, right? So what, what they're basically, what's happening is, is that because everyone's like stepping up and stepping in and they're being a bit more kind of proud of their proposition, so they might charge more. Um, you know, the team are working more collaboratively, so they save money because they're not wasting time, wasting money. It's, it's almost immediate. And people don't believe me. No, they don't believe me, yeah. but it is, I can, I can almost see it happening in the room. I can see the, the lights or the, the, their eyelashes flat fluttering and all the light bulbs going on because they get it straight away, straight away. That's fantastic. Thank now, you. you, like me, uh, you uh, speak to financial advisors internationally as well. Yeah. And it's always been the case that we've kind of seen different countries are at different levels in terms of their positioning in the market. Which Do you see any great best practice from, from overseas that has yet to come over here yet? Or are we leading the charge? How's it going? You know what? I think if you, if you, had, a, if you had a map in front of you and you had a big, fat, juicy purple marker, and you'd probably have a dot of best practice in every country. It's just a different dot for a different bit of best practice. Yeah. So I'll tell you something. So I wrote an article. Let's take the power planning standard as an example, right? The UK are slow at adopting this standard. And I'm actually almost ashamed of them in mm. the UK, straight up. Like, you know, we're here, we're in the UK, all these resources are available. And, you know, the, the UK market of power planners has been slow off the mark. Internationally, they're wiping the floor with them. Right. So you might say a country like Australia might be a little bit behind in its remuneration, for example, because they're going through some changes now, even in their academic sector, where the planners are having to really go high up on the academic scale. They're pushing the boundary, but their power planners are behind. Or you go to the States and there's no academic infrastructure, but they're falling over themselves to get the power planner standard in. 
Yeah. It's yeah. really odd. It's like there's not one country that is, that's got it, but you could pick out bits of every country and just say, oh my God, they're nailing it. They, get, they just get it. Mm. They just get it. You know, like in the, for example, you know, the thing I love about working with planners in the States is they love a bit of rah-rah. They love a bit of client love. We don't yeah. love client love. We're almost embarrassed to put our, swing our arms around a client and cry in a client meeting. They're doing it all the goddamn time. They love it. Yeah. So who's got it right? You know, I don't, I don't know, but all I would say is that there's definitely different aspects in different countries that have, that have just got it. They've just got it. And it's nice. not in one thing. Yeah. So when you go into a firm for the first time. Yeah. Um, and you, you go in there and yeah, maybe they've met you at a conference or event for, and they finally decide, right, let's, we're going to hire Michelle to come in and do the old root and branch uh, takeover. <laughs> takeover. <laughs> what typical things do you see that are common to firms that um, need to up their game a bit, maybe to revamp, reinvigorate their business? What, what sort of things do you see straight away that could be improved well 100 it's the lack of mojo in the person that owns the business they're, right. they're, they're knackered they're knackered they're downtrodden they're overworked they're underloved you know it's it's you know they're running the show the team only exists because they exist it's it's just it's like a lifestyle business gone wrong so that's often the first thing that we talk about and the, the first thing we see is that the business is operating in this zone of an identity crisis. So I explained, they, they, they think they are a big grown up business, but actually they're no more than a lifestyle business. But because they're not really sure, they've got one foot in one camp, one foot in another, and it's a flipping nightmare. So yeah. it, it's a muddle. They're, they're confused. They're dazed and confused the second we step a foot over the front door. You can tell. You can tell. Right. So that's always the first thing. Communication is always pretty bad. They're just not talking enough. There's no structure around, well, we have this meeting to talk about this. Um, and then the third thing is nobody actually knows what their job is. I mean, that's it. It's these right. three core things. And what those three things do is they have a, a massive ripple effect because they just cause problems everywhere. Um, and that's why, I mean, I've mentioned you about the WOW program. You know, that's one of the things we fix straight away, you know, in our, in our work, because we have to, because then the rest almost takes care of itself. Yeah, that's really interesting. I, on, the, on the occasions that I go and do consultancy with financial advisors, I can always tell when you've been there. <laughs> um, and it usually starts with the, with the car park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a big old welcome sign with I my know, name yeah. on it oh, bless the that. best biscuits come out um <laughs> and i know we laugh at these kind of things but the, lots of these tiny things really add up don't they they do they do and um you know i, I often say like this, this is not about a silver bullet you know I, I i will say you know i don't have a magic wand standards aren't a magic wand but i'll tell you what they do they all all this stuff is it's a little tweak and a little tweak and a little tweak there and it's just making people be at work with the goddamn eyes open is yeah. all it is it's being awake and not walking into the office half dead every day you know when you're actually a bit alert and you're like actually why do we do that and nobody god nobody knows why they do certain stuff or why they don't so honestly it's just about being a bit more present and intentional and once you kind of crack that crack that you're onto a winner like it just yeah. starts working like magic almost that's really interesting. Now, and I know some of your clients have been with you for quite a few years. Um, just get, without mentioning names, I don't need to yeah. mention names, but can you give us an example of a firm that you've gone into that perhaps was just like that? Yeah. And the sort of changes that, that you suggested um, and, and what they look like now? Yeah, so um, I won't mean any names, but, if, but by me describing, we'll probably allude to the, who they are. Um, so two guys running a business, um, you know, young go-getting, London-based, firecrackers, um, just totally different as individuals was, was problem number one. Um, one, values and a kind of ethos the same, but just different paths totally. So after smashing both their heads together to tell them to sort themselves out through a collaborative discussion I kind of just got them to think about what the bigger picture was everyone seems to get lost including them in the day job like just this kind of all this issue and this that, that issue and that client just too much yeah so when you yanked them out which we did and got them on a bit of a path defining their purpose 
and setting their eyes on the prize, everything just changed. We changed their team infrastructure. We appointed a practice manager. Um, you know, they got their systems, their procedures. They got their client journey documented. And they went through a phase a couple of years ago of cleaning up at awards. It was like, surely not another. Come on. Yeah. But because they behaved like a proper business, they weren't just two guys messing around at financial planning. They had a goddamn plan, yeah. which they do for their clients every day. So it was a bit of a, let's just snap them into shape and get them sort of thinking around along the right line. So it was that. It was fundamentally that. Just And now they're nailing it, absolutely nailing it. And, and I've since told their story at many conferences over the last couple of years, their yeah. journey, many of them. So, yeah, and there's loads like that, loads and loads where they've just lost that that bit of sparkle in fact you know one of the one client who i went to see she joined the wow program um again tra trailblazing financial advisor planner been around a long time you know i said to her you're gonna have to stop faffing around like you're just bouncing around and not doing anything so sometimes a bit of straight talking just yeah snaps them back into the gear a bit and that's that's often what they need and again award winning all of our clients win awards like it's just because they're businesses yeah. They're not just they're not just advisors working at the back end of a bedroom somewhere. They've, they've, they've got so you to... work. Uh, tell us about the Wow program. That presumably is over a period of time. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Oh my god. So, um, God, how long you got? You might have me on here for like four. Hours. <laughs> <laughs> tell me to stop when you've had enough of me. Um, so if we go back one step, so the whole Wow thing. Not many people know how it came about, right? So it came about for two two reasons. So. I once did a presentation um, and I'd, I was following, my presentation was going to be all about standards, right? Which can be quite a dry, unsexy subject. I'm not going to lie, right? So I walked on stage and I, I could see, as my feet went up the steps, as they do, I looked out at the audience and there was just death on these people, these planners' faces. It looked like someone had just kicked the living daylights out of them. And they just had a mythid presentation, nice, right? Nice, nice, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I'm walking up these steps, thinking on my feet, going, think, 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 Michelle. And I got to the top of the steps and I was like, I've got to literally annihilate my whole presentation. Because if I deliver it, mm. they're going to want to strangle me. Okay. So I got on the stage and I said, do you know what? I said, I was going to talk to you about standards and best practice. But do you know what? I'm going to talk about how you can wow. And that was it. Yeah. So Miss Wow was born. I then did a thing at the co local college where I presented to the media students and the business students about, you know, branding and this, that, and the other. And this, this girl in the audience with this sort of hoodie, she was a bit scary looking teenager. I thought she was going to like just, just go into hibernation during the whole thing. It's about you. So it's like you doing is you school. It's like, oh my God, you're so scared of these kids. And I, literally, and I, and I looked at her and she went, so, what, so what's your stage name? And I'm like, um, what stage name? And she's like, well, Lady Gaga isn't called Lady Gaga. And I'm like, I'm no Lady Gaga, let me tell you. So she's like, well, what, what do they call you? And I went, well, they call me Michelle Oskin. And she's like, right. Oh, my gosh. She's like, you're, you're like looking at me going, right, right, you're a bit slow. And I was like, right, what do you mean? And she said, well, what do they say when you come off stage? And I said, well, they go, wow, that was amazing. And she was like, right, little Miss Wow. That was it, stuck. And it's never gone. So the WOW program is about a two-year development program where we start with a firm who's probably in a bit of a dodgy state and we just get them right through to being awesome. And we yeah. are coaching them and supporting them in workshops all the way through. And it's amazing, amazing. And at the end, they get assessed against BS 8577. Right. And we've just had the first seven firms graduate in December. Boom, shakalaka. They, they nailed it. They, they work so hard, but we make it fun and it's very purple and it's very sparkly because we engage at a level that just doesn't happen in financial services anywhere. Yeah. So we've just started the first intake this year and it's, you know, like, the, sorry, the first and the second intake in that's January. Really, that's really interesting. Um, one of the things in our online forums, um, one of them in, on Facebook, we're starting to see um, more and more younger advisors yeah. coming in. Many are perhaps starting as paraplans. Everyone says, what do we do to attract more youngsters into the profession? Well, from my angle, there seems to be plenty coming into the profession. Oh, um, and, work for you. But it looks to me like they all, they all, they're all looking for guidance. Um, how do I market my business? How do you get leads? Should I join a network? 
off the top of your head, what sort of advice would you give to someone if they if they like their first day is is next week and they're thinking of, where should they start so they start off on the right footing? Well, t- to be honest, I mean, you get into forums like yours. I mean, just pick as much information up as possible. But listen to podcasts, you know, get on the blur and, you know, phone you, phone me. You know, I- I'm amazed by how many people that don't contact me and all the stuff I know. And I'd, I'd be happy to sit there talking about how to be awesome for free to a, somebody that's starting out, probably as you would. There's so much resource. So really put yourself out there. The thing I would tell them to do, and it's interesting, and I won't name any names because it would be embarrassing, but I listen to a next gen, flipping next gen, drive me flipping nuts, right? Next gen. I listened to a next gen advisor and he was talking about, um, you know, how important it was for him in the sector. And you know what? I listened and I've listened to many of them and all they tend to do is talk about, kind of um what's the word like they're they're just they're just regurgitating the same stuff it's there's nothing new no one's true next gen is totally different thinking yeah and i'm not sure anybody's got that we're trying to flip and break every mold going and be as disruptive as we can deliberately but i'm not sure next gen have gone next gen enough they're almost oh well we'll we'll do it this way but it's not that far off what's been done being done for the last 20 years it's almost just pointless that's really interesting just to interrupt you for a moment i was talking to justin king this morning Mm -hmm. we both know him and we were talking about um this baby here right an alexa uh an an echo device and the impact that things like that are going to have in the financial so you know we talk about robo advice we kind of glibly use that word um i've only had this thing for a, a week and i'm already finding it invaluable yeah in terms of i just ask it a question and um it comes up with it and we can just see how that's going to be so Incredible. next gen i think is a completely different kind of financial planner altogether well, we look at it like this, right? So, so we, we are currently redesigning the whole, I mean, there's bits and pieces being done, but we are redesigning the way that a financial services firm should work, okay? So the sad thing is, is the, the next gen planners that I think are coming into the profession are learning from the wrong people. Because what they're doing is, they're learning from the people that won't be ballsy enough to take and make those changes themselves, right? Because fundamentally, they'd have to re I mean, I've been into next gen leaders businesses they need a whole flipping rewrite whole rewrite the whole thing needs ripping to bits and starting from scratch yet yeah. people are, le- le- are le- these people are leading the next generation how how is that a thing so how uh, in your view as we look into the future and the future of financial planning and the future in this day and age could be next year yeah. Um, and the long distance future is five years, five years out. How do firms need, to, what, what sort of things do they need to be thinking about now to future proof them? So yeah. against all the disruptive forces that, that are inevitably, uh, well, they're arriving now. Yeah. Forget that they're financial planners. Okay. Sim- simply just forget their financial planners F- approach their businesses. Like it's a business. Imagine they're setting up a car dealership or a marketing agency or a, you know, I make, widgets the only way that we're going to future proof is to actually allocate resources and time and effort and love to our businesses we we as an an industry and as a profession are too obsessed with financial planning financial planners financial planning qualifications exams study we've lost it lost it like I, I could I could go on and on and on about the fact that you know I, I, God I even saw it fell on one of your groups and it was like um, you know we've just hired a chartered para planner slash report writer top of their game I'm like well a load of bunkum they're not the top of their game who says they're top of the game because they're dead smart so it we've we've got this obsession with financial planning and delivering financial advice and the client outcome and what we're doing as a sector what's happening is we're forgetting about the most important thing of of all and that is the business and if i if i the what what you know as i was saying to joe doing her induction the new lady that started today you know it it, i'll it will go way past my lifetime but my my dream is that you know if i say to somebody you know what do you do and they don't say i'm a financial planner they say i run a financial planning business wow i mean 
or I run a business that's, that operates in financial services. Boom shaka, right? We, we, we're doing the wrong, we're talking about the wrong thing and obsessing of, over the wrong, the wrong thing. It's key, it's so important that we, we get to be the top of our game technically, but that doesn't define who we are as a profession, how flipping smart we are. It's how great our businesses are, the WOW program, the standards, the, that's all they're trying to do. That's all they're trying to do is to establish what does business awesome look like. That's Good, interesting. So, best practice. So presumably you also work with firms, you can go into a firm that is actually already quite good. Yep. Maybe they're quite successful. Um, so you're taking them to another level altogether. Oh, totally another level. Like blow your brains out another level. And, yet, and, and they, they've got the money and they've met, they're making good money, but they know they're capable of so much more. And that's right. the bit they bring me in. That's when they bring us in and what we do. And that's, so that's interesting. Now, I realize every firm is different. Um, but when you are dealing with a firm like that, that have reached a, a, a quite a good level, is there, are there typically things that, that are common to each of those businesses that will take them up to the next level? Well, no, they, they've got money to spend. They, they have the money, you know, they, they have, because it's interesting, because I have this battle with myself all the time. I want to help mass market because, you know, we've got, we've got, we've got the little guys that, that are on our wire program that there's one person and I will mention, I will mention him because I did put it up in, in, uh, in your Facebook group, Damien Clyburn, um, based in uh, Ottery St. Mary. I mean, what a guy, like he's so unassuming that you would think this guy just has a little crappy little business that bounces around down the arse end of the country. But you know what? His dreams and aspirations for his business were so amazing. I couldn't help but support him. Now, yeah. he's not a typical client of ours. You know, our clients are awesome already and getting more awesome. But I could just see that he could see what that looked like. And I, and I was with him all the way. We, we supported <sighs> him the whole way through. So it's just that, I mean, I did say to him two things. If he's going to embark on this journey to super awesome, he's got to have the money to chuck at it, to buy those nice client gifts, to, you know, renovate his office, to maybe not work five days a week and specify client profile and stuff. And he's got to have it in him. They've got, they've got to have that drive that's so unconditionally embedded in what they're doing and that's what he, he had he didn't know he was going to have the money but he yeah. had the drive and that was all i needed and that's yeah. why we supported him through yeah. so it's about drive and have it can they see it can i see it can we see it with them and they've got our support 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah fantastic now i know you're a, a huge fan of um million dollar round table mdrt which, um, well, you tell me because um, I know there are lots of people, we see this come up in our forum from time to time, there's still a perception amongst many financial advisors that MDRT is about this. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Where did you get that from? <laughs> I've had this quite a while. I can't even find it. It says it was published in 1990. I think um, it was published before that. But in the days of selling life assurance mm -hmm. this is just phenomenal the content <laughs> it's amazing these bizarre one-liners that uh <laughs> that you drop into a conversation yeah. with the client and they go oh yeah well i've got it where do i sign um yeah i think for a lot of people it's still about still about that tell us what mdrt is about today so I've, I've been involved in MD, with, with MDRT for about six years, seven years. And, um, okay, when anybody asks me, this is what I say. You imagine walking into an auditorium with 10,000 people in it who all love financial services as much as you do. Right? Yeah. It's like a drug. So forget the books and the tips and the sales and all that. That feeling of doing that is overwhelming. And I've, I've sat in, in full um, main, main platform and I've had I've, the whole line of financial planners, all men, all in tears down the left-hand side of me. Incredible. Because it's so amazing that it's almost like a shot of adrenaline that you need. And it, you almost need to keep yourself topped up with it. And it's the vibes that people go to MDRT for, the support from colleagues, the guy that you meet at the bar to talk about how his business is in Dubai and he's turning over $6 billion a year. And you're like, well, you've only got 24 hours in the day. How do you do that? And he'll stand there and he'll tell you every secret he's got. Yeah. 
right so as with all of these things it's the people and and so much so that the out of those six years um seven years i've been invited i've spoke three I've spoken three times i've been invited twice and i've taken myself there for the other two times i've not been to the meetings but i've hung out in receptions i've stayed in the hotels i've gone to see my friends the people that i've met just because you you can't miss it now you either you either go for it please grab that you either go for it and just go once and never go again yeah. but you've got to go once you've got to go once this this year's in miami i'm speaking again um you know there could be fifteen thousand people at that meeting and the vibe is incredible so forget about i mean who's bothered if there's a book on sales we're all i'm selling to my daughter i'm negotiating with her to get ready for school and i'll get her a new picture for a wall we're doing it all yeah. the time i don't i don't know why selling has become this this bad word and you know the books like that are this nonsense we're selling all the time to everybody yeah. everybody yeah. and they certainly get some um, amazing content some amazing speakers um, I guess um, from everything, I, I've never been. I, I've spoken at the a UK one in London a while ago. Yeah. Um, and I know many, many people who, who go all the time and they say it's just a must. It is. It is. You, you, you don't want to not have it in your calendar. Like it's, it's got to be something that you, you, you do. And uh, you build lifelong relationships, friendships. And, you know, there is, if, if genuinely, if you stood, you know, and I would love to test this, if I stood in the auditorium where people are registering and I shouted out, I've got a problem with my business, can somebody help me? I'd have 100 people around me in a millisecond. Yeah, it would fantastic. it would be incredible and it and it's it's that it's that love that that is mdrt forget the rest there's this politics and you know it's there's some dodgy bits to it like there's some dodgy bits of everything yeah sure but you know what you you can't put a price on it i i, I go when i'm not invited i just rock up and turn up and get on a flight and i'm over <laughs> i'm over there and then yeah, I I've, I've seen your videos going around the hotel <laughs> grounds uh, yeah yeah views. to be fair that was hawaii that deserved a video <laughs> and i was speaking at that and i was just like this is amazing i love it <laughs> fantastic fantastic michelle this has been superb time has uh, flown by i really really appreciate uh, your time today um and and your tips absolutely superb um so what we're doing um in this mastermind is also a challenge where we're asking uh, everybody we're talking to to set a little challenge yeah. or a big challenge if they feel that way that uh, people could take on board over a set period of time um, and so over to you what challenge would you, would you set for advisors watching this I want every planner that's watching this video to go back to their business and with a blank sheet of paper honestly write down all the things that happen in their business that they're just not happy with so don't brush it under the carpet, you know, don't just go, oh, well, there must be a reason for this. If they spot something that's not right, there's errors, there's inaccuracies going out in reports, there's people who are moaning about their jobs, whatever it is. Yeah. They're, they're not happy. I need them to do this pains list because the reason I want them to do it is because a bit of honesty is what starts this whole process rather than just going, oh, no, it's all right. We're making a few quid. We'll just, we'll let it go. Stop letting stuff go and stop compromising on people and things that aren't working properly. That's interesting. And presumably, uh, so these are often things that are, are unsaid within a business. Oh, presumably yeah. You, would, you could do that exercise with your colleagues, your staff. Everybody. Everybody, wow. everybody, because, because um, you know, I, I'll, I'll sit around a boardroom table and, and I can spot a white, I can spot an elephant in the room, a flipping mile away. And I'm like, right, what's going on? What, what's, what we're not talking about? And we'll get it out. And you know, once it's out, it's out and we can fix it. But if someone keeps brushing it under the carpet, like, you know, I've got administrators going, well, she don't do her job properly and I'm ending up doing half of her job for her. Well, let's talk about it. Let's just not just keep it on to yourself and just moan about it. Yeah. It's this, let's get it out. Let's get it out there so that we're all talking about what's not working. So yeah. do the list. Do the list of the stuff that you're not happy with. Get it out on a bit of paper, wow. wherever. Just so simple as well. Well, it's, it, yeah, it's just this compromising thing. Why, why do people keep compromising when stuff's not working right? I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. And yeah. it, but it's, it's the root cause of so many problems. And I guarantee, see, the next step, you know, if they want a decent coach to obviously come to us, however, to help them. But you know that, I reckon if I took that list or any one of my coaching team took that list, we would roll every single problem back 
to the root cause of probably three or four things. Yeah. Fix those three or four things, the rest will just vanish. It's, it is, and it sounds ridiculous, but it's like magic. Yeah. You've got to roll it, you know, because shit rolls downhill, right? So you fix the stuff at the top. You don't let the boulder roll off in the first place. You, you're, you're on the home straight. Yeah. So, so much compromise and, well, let's not say we don't want to upset her. And No, say, let's get it out. Let's get it out on the table and figure out what's going on. That's right. And are you, I presume you see that a lot in the firms All you time. work in. All the time. All the time. You know, all the time. Every, every time. You know, there's always some elephant in the room. There's always someone that's not saying something or something's not working. So, you know, it's an obvious saying, but, you know, people don't have time to do it right, but they seem to have time to do it twice. Well, what's all that about? They're all moaning that they've got no time, yet they're overcompensating for other people, not them doing the jobs properly, systems that don't work, an arrogant boss who's just blooming horrible to everybody. It's all, it's all got to come out. Yeah, yeah. Because that boss might not realise he's an arrogant you know, so and so, and but it needs it needs to be said. It needs to come out. Honesty is where it all starts. Superb. So, where can people get hold of you? How can they uh, get in touch with you? How could they? Uh, what's the best thing they should do? Well, if they fancy tracking me down on social media, that would be a pleasure. Okay. <laughs> to see me wandering around hotel gardens. Um, just a website, standardsinternational.co.uk. There's tons of stuff on there. You know, pick up the phone and speak to Kelsey or one of the team. All the information's online. Or you can just email me at michelle at standardsinternational.co.uk. And if I can help or I'll draft in other team members, we've got loads of stuff that we're doing. You know, we're trying to pioneer best practice change the way that the sector's operating and you know whether it's in my lifetime or not you know wow will be will take center stage at some point and we're we're pushing hard to get us there fantastic superb right. michelle thank you so much for your time today so really uh, really do appreciate it thanks to everybody who's been watching today for those of you that want to take up michelle's challenge you'll have the opportunity to join a private online group uh, where you can share how you're getting on, uh, get accountability, uh, accountability partners, ask questions, right. and so on. So once again, Michelle Hoskin, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see everybody on the next video. Bye.